It's a while since I've taken apart a cheap Chinese LED nightlight, and this one's quite attractive because it uses a light source shining up from below to light these plastic flowers, and it looks pretty good, I have to say. It's that cold white, which, as you know, I prefer warm white, but, you know, I can fix that. And at the moment it's drawing 17 milliamps. So uh, let's take it to bits. And here it is under the bright lights, and it's turned off now because it's got a light sensor, and it's still drawing 17 milliamps. So, um, that kind of alludes to what circuitry is in this. It's going to be the very typical sort of nightlight type circuitry. So let's open it up. The power consumption is, it's not even registering on the unit, it's just, it's not a high at all. So am I going to fit one of these? No, I'm not going to fit that. Oh, look at all the bits of metal stuck to that. It's the pearl of magnetic screwdrivers. So let's use one of these to open it. Would have been nice if it had been pink, but you know what? It's one of these listings that you don't get to choose the colour. I uh, know. Maybe I should look for one where I can choose it. Pink being the traditional colour of this channel for dodgy electrical devices. So inside we've got the light sensor in the bottom. We've got an LED. Is that glued in? Nope, it's just poked up there, so that's going to be quite easy to change. And the little circuit board soon find out if this is a discharge resistor or not when I stick my fingers across it. Okay. Initially looking at it, I can see the dropper capacitor. I can see it's a discharge resistor. I can see that... Let's draw, draw it out. Where's my notepad? Here's my notepad. So I'll just draw it out in the usual format, which we're all kind of used to. Uh, the difference will be the light sensor circuit. So we start off with the mains in, and it's a, it's one of these typical Chinese generic two-pin plugs that can go in either way. Uh, they actually, it says in the back, uh, it's rated at uh, 20 milliamps and 0.1 watt, which is... Oh, and it says also 110 to 220 volts, so... Um, I wonder if they just, uh, that's the, using just the standard value capacitor. I think that would be dimmer on 100 and, uh, 10, 120 volt. <clears throat> but, um, so let's uh, draw this out. One lead is going to the capacitor, rather predictably. Which is a 220 nano. Nano farad. Uh, 400 volt capacitor, good. One of the last ones was uh, what, a lower voltage capacitor they'd been cheaping out. The resistor across it is yellow, violet, yellow. We pause while you try, guys try and work out what the value of that is. Four, seven and four zeros, 470k. Again, a good choice of value, that's not bad. Then it's going to the bridge rectifier, as is the other lead, so... Lazy bridge rectifier, AC, AC. I'll just uh, mains in. In the UK, we call the main power supply into the house, our 240 volt supply, we call it mains, the mains. That's just what we call it. I know that a few of you have been wondering what that actually, why I actually refer to it as the mains, and that's why I'm not sure what it's referred to in other countries. The output of the bridge rectifier is going straight to that electrolytic capacitor. Which is a value of 220 microfarad at 16 volts. 220 microfarads at 16 volts. The LED has one side connected to negative. I'll put the LED over here because I kind of know what's coming in here. There's the LED. And the other side is connected 
via a resistor to positive orange orange brown three three and one zero three hundred and thirty ohms so the transistor which is a 2N5551 is connected one side's connected to negative oh and the other side's connected to positive, ok this is why it draws just as much current when it's off because it's basically just shorting the supply out which is a common way they do it, it's just the simplest, cheapest way of doing it from the manufacturing perspective um, the LDR, the light dependent resistor, this little thing here, cadmium sulfide photocell is connected between positive and the transistor base so it's there I'll put a couple of wee arrows at it to show it's a LDR and that's going straight to the base and there's going to be another resistor going down to negative to set the sensitivity of that so that is... where's that? it's a violet green red is that an odd value? violet green red 7... 5... oh no that's 7.5k okay kind of rare that I come across those and it's connected between the base and negative, so that's a, yep 7.5k so that means that uh, when it's there's ambient light in the room the base of this transistor is turned on but at the same time that's effectively pulling the voltage across this capacitor down, so that probably explains the gentle transition, it, it doesn't just turn on at night, it gradually just fades up and that must be because the current is being shunted by the transistor and you know, I, I wonder what voltage it goes down to when the LED is completely off all it's doing is just keeping the voltage below the point the LED can light um, it won't go down to zero because if it went down to zero there would be nothing to actually keep the transistor turned on so it must reach an equilibrium um, how, I, there's only one way to find out, I shall uh, meter that right now which is going to be precarious because it's going to involve a live circuit board dangling about so I want to measure the voltage with a suitable death adapter I want to measure the voltage Ugh. keep the fingers away from that circuit board across the capacitor or the transistor wherever I can actually get the leads on in fact Let's turn it, I'm not expecting it to be too high, so I'll turn it to 2 volts Let's see if I can blow something up while I'm doing this Alright, I can go across the diodes there Oh, this is a bit, uh, bit precarious I have to say Am I going to get a better access if I go in the top? Yeah, dangly circuit boards and meters, it's just, it just never works out well, does it? As soon as you press the probe on, the thing slides away. 0 0.7 volts, it's really just barely, because it's quite bright in here. Yeah, I'm just not, as soon as I put the leads on it, it just the circuit board moves away here. Uh, let's see if I can do it somewhere else yeah about, it's just barely above the voltage required to keep the uh, transistor on just that, uh, see I, I'm just really not making a connection here at all, it's just so wobbly But yeah, just above uh, the 0.6 volts required to keep the transistor on um, and it, it really is when, it, as it gets dark, you, in fact, if you put your hand near it and 
when it's lit at night and reflect the light back into the light sensor, it just gently fades down. It, it's a very soft transition. So um, <coughs> I have to say, I quite like it, but you know what? I'd like it with a warm white LED. I wonder if it would uh, actually look good with a, uh, the straw hat LED instead of the focused one, or if it actually needs the focused one to actually fire the light up. Although, having said that, it's going through a diffuser. So I might just stick a straw hat LED in that and see what it looks like. I should think I'll do that right now. OK, I've picked my new LED. I ended up trying the focus version and the straw hat. To be honest, I prefer the straw hat because it is ultimately being diffused anyway. A bit disappointing that this is slightly tinted blue, which detracts from that. It makes the already cold white LED even colder, but it still puts out a lot of light with the warm white. So let's uh, change the LED. The first thing I'm going to do is reflow the solder of the existing LED just slightly with a touch of fresh solder just to make sure it desolders easier. And unusually the LED holes, oh you know what, it's because it's designed to take two LEDs. The circuit board is actually designed to take uh, two by the look of it, but they've just put one in and uh, bridged it across. Oh actually no, that's weird, it's, uh, they've got a completely different arrangement. I think it's a multi-purpose board here. So I've desoldered the LED. I'm going to use a bit of the desoldering wick. This, although this wick's called Gutwick and is sold on eBay as Gutwick, apparently that's a Japanese brand and it's far too cheap to be the real thing. So this must be a Chinese clone, I guess. Uh, it's good though, it seems, it seems pretty good as wick goes. So, on this LED they've used the spacer on the negative, so we'll put the spacer on the negative again because it's black and it, that does help identify it. And I shall put this back in now. Yeah, so the position of the leads is such that the LED, it's, the, it's not just the usual spacing for an LED, they're just a wee bit wider, which precluded the uh, ease of desoldering by just uh, my usual trick of just putting the soldering iron across both pads at once. But that said, it still came out easy enough. So let's, uh, I've soldered one lead, I'll just align it up, get it perfect, and then I'll solder the other. Then grab the first pair of snips that comes to hand, the cheap generic Chinese ones, in this case, and uh, cut the leads. So now that uh, LED is a warm white one and uh, I can put it back together. Uh, I'm really confident here so I'll just stick it back together and if it doesn't work I'll just eat humble pie afterwards. So this uh, shoves in like this. The flower assembly goes in like that. The little lens goes over the LDR, the light dependent resistor. And then this should just sit together. Oops. Just drop the light dependent resistor, the cover. Let's see if I can just click it in. It does have little wedges that suggest it's designed to sort of click in. Oh, it does. Right, screws in. Again, uh, if you look at the... Which video was it? I put the link to all the LEDs, the eBay searches. Um, I can just do it again in this video, if needs be. Uh, it's dead easy to buy these LEDs in bulk off eBay. So let's... Uh, it's plugged in now, so let's uh, turn this light off and it's immediately come up, so I'll just... That is looking a lot nicer. The Again, the iPad is trying to correct it to um, the sort of colder side of the white, but it uh, actually looks a lot warmer now, even despite the 
uh, the blue plastic trying to tint that, this does, well you can see, it, it does look m uh, much warmer and it looks even warmer to me, it's actually quite a golden white. Yeah, that's nice, I, I quite like this little light, it's, it's quite attractive. Um, yes, I might actually buy another, just for the hell of it, see if I can end up with some with different colours. As one does, because, uh, yeah, that's, that's quite a nice little nightlight. 